Hey everyone, welcome to Phantom Sound. A lot of you guys have enjoyed my Ultimate t route tutorial, where I've been covering everything from sound design to mixing and mastering, and now I'm back with the Ultimate Future Rhythm tutorial. It's a very interesting genre and I love it so much, so let's find out what we are going to be looking at in this video. So let's find out how to make this kind of drop. Let's start with the drums. I have a very basic future rhythm loop. With a kick from Leotrix. Head layered on top of it. And some kind of laserish percussions. And open hi-hat. I have a couple of claps. This sound very rhythmish and I have a very interesting trick uh, to show you guys how to make each sample have this uh, rhythm flavor. So clean it sounds like this. Then with a couple of distortion and EQ plugins we have something like this but what makes it sound like a rhythm clap is the serum. It's the same trick that you are using for your rhythm basses, of course, is the delay fix with the feedback set to 62, left and right channels at 16 and 19, and a frequency set to 3900 with the ping pong mode enabled, and mix set at center. So it makes a huge difference. Awesome. And finally, I have a really heavy hi hat and uh, another ride from the Leatrix. That's the final version of the drum loop. Awesome. Let's go ahead and add a sub bass. I'm using Vital. This is my favorite plugin for working with sub basses. Sounds really fat. I have a very aggressive high cut on this bass, but clean sounds like this. Really massive. And it's automated. There is a white noise automation, which makes a huge difference. There's a level automation and a pitch automation on the oscillator with a bit different envelopes and a really tremendous amount of distortion from the compressor and distortion fixes. And together it sounds like this. I prefer EQ in this one because it cuts a lot of mud and really pops up the really very very low end of the sub bass which is awesome then we are going to add a classic wobble it's a simple square waves on the first oscillator the octave is set to minus two and on the second one the semitone is set to seven both of them are automated using the first lfo and there are a couple of fixes A bit of a distortion and a compressor. And that's it. I have the EQ on it. OTT compressor. Isotope Ozone 10 impact to pump the low mids a bit. And another EQ with some high frequencies removal. 
and finally there is a maximizer. I've made this base mono, moving this knob all the way up. Clean it sounds like this. So we only need these frequencies and another layer. Everything is the same except the wave is set to soul and I've used a bit different octaves on this one. Awesome. And another layer. It's a really crispy uh, low mid bass, which is based on the Icon has kick wavetable. It's a factory wavetable that I like. And final layer is basically just a first wobble bass, which is really, really heavy filtered. So the only thing left is the white noise, basically. And this layer gives us the huge width on the bass. I have the OTT and Isotope was on E major with the stereo width set all the way up. See how simple white noise, really white white noise, uh, makes such a huge difference in the mix. The whole vocal bass now sounds really crispy and white. Let's get to the lead. I have the simple synth. It's a simple one oscillator preset with a bit of detune and a shuffle automation and simple melody. I'm using the auto tune on this one. OTT, uh, Melda Production by Bretto, Blood Overdrive, some EQ in Harmony Engine, and a couple of more plugins. But those are really minor. The most important over here is the pitch map. So over here I've set it to A, which is our root note of the song and the pentatonic minor with all the rest of the knobs looking like this. And I've resampled it because the pitch map is really resource intensive and it makes my laptop really tired. So I'm turning everything off and here's the layer. Here I have another layer which is a simple super sauce with the same set of plugins, except I'm not using the pitch map on this one. Here is the post-processing chamber. It's also almost a dead mono. And I resampled it as well. making some final EQ adjustments, making it pure mono. Then I'm duplicating this layer. Making it really wide, adding a frequency shifter for the nice wobbly movement and cutting the low frequencies. So we are getting something like this. We have two layers. One is a mono lead layer, which will sound uh, nice on all systems, including the mono speakers. And the second layer uh, adds a nice stereo effect to the song. And altogether, it sounds like this. Nice, I have a couple of 
more samples. It's the virtual right and mode step symbol and a vocal chop as the offbeat sound. There is the clean sound. So I have the OTT compressor distortion, some EQing, the low cut harmony engine. I'll always use the vocal multiplier preset with the mix of the harmony engine set to around 10 or 15 percent. Then I'm adding the isotope ozone imager to make it stereo. Another EQ with the high cut, another OST, and that's it. And in the second part of the drop, we have this nice lead, which is on the same post-processing chain as the main lead. The pitch map layer to add some background harmonies to the lead and the main lead. It's over here. Let me bring back all these plugins. It's another square wave lead, really detuned one. With some harmony on the second oscillator. Noise. And the reverb filter. Which is set to 375 Hz and the automation on 12 and a bit of a distortion and I have the master tuning automation I've resampled those as well. Let's disable those plugins. And here's the resampled version. You can disable the high cut on the sub bass if you like to make the sub really pumpy. I prefer keeping it clean, cutting all this stuff. And let's take a look at the mastering of this drop. I have the OTT compressor on the master and some post EQ. Clean, it sounds like this. So here's the compressor, which glues everything together, making it sound really tight and compressed. I'm Reducing the high frequencies a bit. And the EQ cuts quite a lot of mud, which makes a huge difference. And finally, there is a maximizer uh, with the IRC4 mode set to transient. Nice, let's check the loudness of the track using the inside. It's somewhere around minus 3.5 or minus 4 decibel, which is awesome. And finally, we are going to check if this tune will sound nice on the mono speakers. So basically, what we have here is two layers which are really that are really wide. 
stay a wobble layer and delete layer. And all the rest of the track is pretty much mono. So if we enable the mono mode for the testing purpose, we should be okay with it. So nothing falls off the mix, everything sounds awesome and if we bring the stereo back, everything is nice and wide. Okay, so we are done with this project. Uh, don't forget that you can get this particular project, all the samples from it and all the presets on my Patreon page. You can take a listen to it once again on my Discord page. Make sure to visit it. There is a lot of interesting stuff going on there, so I will be really happy to see you there. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, leave a comment and like this video. This helps Phantom Sound to grow a lot. And we will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye!